There he is. All right, staying down nice. We're back on Lake Winnebagosh, and you know, we've, we've encountered all kinds of different patterns out here over the years, and uh, by far, you look at Minnesota walleye lakes, you know, you can hardly talk about listing the top five without listing Lake Winnie. What I like about this area is every time I come up here, it's different patterns, there's just different things happening. There's, you know, there's lots of different ways to catch a walleye on Lake Winnebagosh. These fish can be anywhere from five to 10 feet of water and they're spread out, they're scattered just because of the way the terrain is. The water's very, very clear out here. Pulling monofilament and you're just using a, just a tiny little bullet weight or a split shot above a spinner rig, just throwing it out behind the boat, pulling it mile, mile and a half an hour. And you're just trying to go until you mark fish. Well, sometimes we may adjust by putting a split shot on, add it onto here. If we're in eight to 10 feet of water, this works fine. If we move out to 15 or deeper, we want to add a, like a 16th ounce split shot to this, and then that'll drop us down to compensate for the difference in depth. That is cool. And we just marked a fish, but three seconds later, your rod loads up. That is cool. Hanging down nice. You know, these fish are scattered. You can go 100 yards and sometimes not see nothing. Then all of a sudden, mark four or five of them, and there they are. It's a walleye. Oh, yeah, beautiful walleye. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Very neat. Get nice. this fish out of the nice net one. here. Yeah. Yep, just, uh, just a long shank spinner, double hook in that minnow going about a mile and a half an hour. These fish are just scattered in here, but the cool thing is you see them on the screen. So yeah. trust your electronics, seeing is believing right there. Yep. Nothing nicer when you can see them, then all of a sudden your pole tightens right up. It's like that up for them. <laughs> <laughs> Fast release. Yeah. <laughs> they don't stop fighting, do they? <laughs> all right. A little goldy shiner through the gills and stick them in the back. The hook's way back deep. Back in we go. Now these fish just kind of run on these little pods. If you can imagine just two, three, four, five fish in a group, it's a little clump. So you'll be going along and go quite a ways sometimes and see nothing. Then when you, you mark one or two, three fish, and a lot of times just a matter of catch them or spin around on that mark and just do as much damage as you can before you lose them. And then it's just off to find another, another group of fish. Yeah, the slot on, on Lake Winnebagosh is 18 to 23 inches. Uh, they just changed that here last year so you can harvest a few more fish than the up on the lower end plus on the top end. Uh, they're trying to get reduced the amount of a bigger fish in the lake so that they don't eat so much of the uh, younger fish. So anyway you got a, you got a pretty good uh, opportunity. It's one of the few lakes with a still a six fish limit as far as the big lakes in Minnesota. So it's a great opportunity to, to catch a, some nice quality fish and some nice eaters. Got another one? All right. I just had a hit too. All right, you feel like a good one here? Yeah. Get real up here. Like another wall, I hang right. down nice. I just had a pick up there right at the same time. I looked over at you and. There he is. Oh, yeah. Boy, I just love that clear water. You know, it's amazing, these fish, you know, we're only 11 feet of water. In fact, look at here, you can see the nice junk. Nice fat one, too. Yeah. Very nice. You can see the junk on your spinner there. But these fish are just cruising these weeds. Uh, don't you just love that? Pretty. Very nice. <laughs> these nice fish, gold. I watched your rod, that fish hit with a chip on its shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> Probably another 19-inch fish there. Yeah. So very healthy. This kind of a cara sand grass that's out there. You know, it's low lying. You see it on the depth finder at times, it might come up a foot at the most, but just kind of patchy. And these walleyes just love this on Lake Winnie, don't they? Yeah, and these spinners ride just over the top of that. So not like a jig where you'd be gathering it up on your hook all the time. And it just keeps it so the fish they can grab a hold of it without being covered with the moss and stuff, so. 
Well, this is the opening couple weeks of fishing season here. It's May. With the main forages of uh, after the spawn, walleyes usually follow the Shiner Run. And the Shiner Run starts pretty much in the bay where we were fishing there, Tamarack Bay. And she now, like we talked earlier, spawning in the sand up there. And those walleyes are right behind those Shiners. They kind of basically follow them. You know, I started out, you know, it's clear water. I started out this year. It's going to be a really good color out here. There's a real, this is just basically a real Shiner pattern, silver. Charlie's using gold, but that's typical. You know, you start out. There's no sense in using the exact same thing as your friend that you're fishing with. Try different things, you know, whether you've you got your kids out or your spouse out or, you know, you, that's the advantage of fishing with, with different people is that you can, you can test things a lot quicker. I'm smart enough to know that something else is working to switch up and do what is working. So gold is the color today. You know, early in the year when these shiners first start to run, you know, first half of the season, shortly after the opener, you can't go wrong, you know, running a lot of these shallow break lines or even right out in front of High Banks Resort. Feels like a good one, Charlie. Good. It's one of the best areas on the whole lake. I mean, if you wanted to, you could go 200 yards out from the dock here and catch walleyes. Oh, yeah. Nice walleye. Oh, nice yeah. Walleye. Dandy walleye. A lot of evenings you'll look out and you'll see, you know, boats working out in front of the resort here. But, you know, you look at these big shallow sand flats that come off these shorelines. They're so shallow and they're so flat and they go for such a long ways. Then all of a sudden they just drop off. And uh, that drop off is pretty sharp. It's pretty dramatic. It might drop off from, say, 7 feet down to 15 feet or 10 feet down to 20 feet. But those first dramatic break lines that come off of those sand flats, they just hold so many walleyes. You just can't go wrong targeting those locations. Tell you what I love, a good spinner bite. It's hands-on, and they thump them, they thump them, but yeah, another great walleye. These would just be great eating fish, wouldn't they? That fish be in the slot limit to keep? That's gonna be very close. Yeah, that's just a, that's just a perfect eater size fish. I mean, that's probably barely in the slot, but yeah, it doesn't get any better than that. Get that fish in the water. I've always loved these spinner bites because <laughs> yeah, they do hit a little bit of a chip on their shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm just kind of working the raw tip every once in a while. And the biggest thing is we've been sliding up and down this break. You imagine the top of this break line might be as shallow as well, eight, nine feet. And if you go in far enough, you're going to find six feet of water, seven feet of water. And it's just so flat. And you come off the edge of this break here and it drops so sharp. And so sometimes, you know, we've been out to 14 feet, 15 feet. Lose a little bit of our wind. Sun gets a little bit higher. You know, we're going to start sliding out a little bit here. We're, we quit marking fish a little bit ago. So we're going to slide out into 17 feet, 16 feet here and just see where we start picking up fish again. But, you know, you're always reeling up line and letting out line just because you just don't want to bog down in that bottom. That's the whole key. Got him? Yeah. All right. How does he feel? Feels decent. All right. Nothing super, but slow us down and straighten the boat here. Where's your line? Okay. Way back there. Okay, well, I'm just going to turn us off and we're just going to drift with the wind. Kind of shook there a little bit like a pike. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's oh, long. Yeah. Oh yeah, that fish would definitely look good in grease. Whoa, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> fish with a walleye thinks he's a smallmouth. <laughs> uh, that's great stuff. Just a growler. They just look mad when they they got that pose and they chomp that chomp their jaws together. I just love when they stick yeah, their fins out. Nice. Great fish. All right. Well, that fish was a touch deeper yet. 17 feet. 18 feet. So the first few fish we caught were probably in that oh, 10, 12, 13 feet. Last couple of fish now have been caught 16, 17, 18 feet. So the higher sun and less wind makes those fish want to slide off down a little deeper down that break. So we'll just move down with them. Walleyes, they just don't like that sunlight. It's just uh, they'll do whatever they can to get out of that. So. And then it's clearer water the deeper they go. Yeah, that's so typical. You know, you get clear water, you know, where you can just see where it's just like an aquarium. And you can catch fish shallow, especially if you get some wind. You get a little bit of overcast or low light. But uh, what I find is that, you know, the fish are a lot spookier in that shallow, clear water too. But, but one thing too to consider is when you get a sharp break like the one we're fishing it, you know, look at the angle of the sun. A lot of times you're going to get a dark shadow wherever you get that sharpest break. And typically that's a, you know, that's a great tip for fishing clear water lakes. 
is imagine where that sun is and imagine where the shadows would be, where the shade would be from the structure and fish those shadows. There he is. All right, staying down nice. I like fishing on Lake Winnebagosh because I like, I like the patterns. They do not want to come up off that bottom, do they? I just love trying to peel them off. <laughs> You can fish some of the deep gravel bars, you can, you can catch fish vertical jigging, you can catch fish trolling crankbaits, you can catch fish pulling spinners like we did today. There's a lot of different varieties of structure, so you can fish a lot of different ways, and that's what I love about Winnemagosh, but beyond that, you know, you look at the lake and, you know, it just has a tremendous walleye population right now. You know, the whole key to experiencing great fishing, as simple as it sounds, you have to fish where they live, and a lot of walleyes live in Lake Winnemagosh. Uh, lake Winnebagosh is a 54,000 plus acre lake. It's the fifth largest lake, one of the big five lakes in the state of Minnesota. That's a big fish. I'll stop us here and slow us down. Well, the three the main fish on the lake are perch, northerns, and walleyes. That's the big three. There is some muskies, a state record. Was caught here, right actually right in front of the resort we came out of today. But the main three fish again are perch, northerns, and walleyes, and they vary. You know, year to year. Here we go, here we go, here we go. There he is. The size of the pike, it, it's fairly decent right now. And there's plenty of them in the lake. Uh, a lot of perch, you just have to fish different areas for them. Uh, a lot of times, and especially in summer there, that you want to fish the rock piles and stuff like that, the crayfish start coming and you can really kind of load up on these perch quite often. And naturally, it's, it's you know, the walleye number one fish in the area here. Like uh, when I guide, 85% of my business is probably looking for walleyes. And there's also, it's connected to Cutfoot Sioux, and there's a bunch of crappies and panfish in Cutfoot. And that's another, you know, seven, 8,000 acre lake that's, a, you know, attached right to the lake here. So it's a, it's a big body of water, plenty of places to go and try. And if it gets sometimes too windy, you can also always duck into Cutfoot and so you've got a place to fish. Good one too. That looks like a good, good fish. Nice and heavy one here. Oh wow, look at there. <laughs> Very cool. That is a dandy right there. Whoa. Oh. There we go. All right. Well, the thing that we look for out here mainly, a lot of times you don't have to, the fish are shallow at this time of year. You don't necessarily always see fish, but you look for the bait and schools of shiners. You will see them on your locator as, as bait schools. And if they're usually find the bait, those fish ain't too far up behind. So that's one of the main things you want to look for at this time of year. You know, that long shake hook on a spinner is just a nice, nice, <laughs> nice way to pull them. You know, yeah, it just adds that little... That hook comes out closer to the tail of the minnow. Yep. You can put more pressure on the fish. A lot to like about. I'm surprised more people don't use long shank hooks, to be honest with you. All right. All right. Get that fish in the water. Well, we're starting to get a little bit of our wind back here. That's good to see. I've seen it happen so often too, Charlie. I'm sure you can agree with this where you know, you're in an area and there's a few boats around and then things kind of quiet down and then everybody leaves and you just kind of wait it out. Yep. And just wait out those windows you'll just get a little bit of ripple or a little bit of wind and it might only blow for half an hour or yep. whatever it is but you just get these little windows where these fish move back up on these spots and you catch them and yep. you just have to have confidence in the spot. You know, some days you might find the fish up on top, up in five, seven feet of water. Other days are deeper down the break, but these fish are right on the lip today. Right where it drops into 10, 12, 13 feet of water, 14 feet of water, they are right stuck on that break. There he is. Ooh, wow. One. Good one. Yeah, this is a good one here. Come on up here. Great right looking fish, huh? It looks like a walleye. 
you know, that wind coming up, that should only help us here. Oh, oh we didn't <laughs> like that net. <laughs> All right, that is a great fish right there. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of what you'd call a, an oversize on Winnie here, but they yes. sure are a fun fish to catch. You know, when you can when you can catch fish to eat and then catch fish to release, that yep. that just makes a great day of Perfect fishing. Day. You know, that's just a beautiful looking fish right there. Nice, big enough, enough to growl at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was cool. Never get tired. No, never get tired of that. <laughs> Cranking on a few big walleyes. <laughs> I love it. No, and we just, we just made a move first pass in here. You know, what's interesting is, you know, the spot where we started out, we caught some fish there. The fish are still there. We were marking them. But at some point, you know, what I like to do a lot is, especially when, the, when a spot clears out, is go ahead and leave it and then let the spot recharge. So sometimes you just have to leave a spot. You can always go back there two or three hours later but you know, hit a few spots, and so we're just gonna bounce around in here, and I think we've got the pattern figured out, Charlie. You know, as far as the type of spots that these fish are in, we'll just hit yep. a few spots real quick and find if there's anybody home. The wind's blowing in here. We got a little more wind than we had over there, so that's gonna help us definitely be in our favor. And we'll start out. There's some stumps in this area here too. It seems like they always hold those fish. We noticed a bunch of bait fish as soon as we pulled in here, so that's always a key especially in shallow water. The shiners are starting to spawn and moving in and those fish will be right behind them. So we'll bait up and do her again. You know, we're using mono and we're getting it out there a little ways behind the boat. I mean, we're, we're just basically a, a good cast behind the boat. We're not fishing them below the boat. And some of it's just the water clarity. I mean, you can see down so far. Fish, when you get this kind of visibility, they're just a touch spookier. They're gonna still be in shallow water at times, especially if there's wind, but uh, you might not be able to do some things like fish right below the boat in that shallow of water or fish with braid. It seems like uh, a lot of times in that clear water, at least for myself, a lot of times I'll have a lot better luck using monofilament line, and I think a lot of it's just because of the visibility of the line. There he is. Ooh, wow. Good one. Good one. Yeah, this is a good one here. <laughs> Pretty incredible place. The right one, too. Yep, nice walleye. Come on up here. Oh, yeah. Come on up. Here he, go. Here he comes. All right, thank you. <laughs> All right. Nice job. Yeah, we'll get this fish out of the net here and show her off. There yep. you go. I love it when you can find fish with the electronics. I'll tell you what, for myself, whenever I'm in a situation where I can mark fish, my confidence soars. That's yeah. what I love about this is we just keep scooting around until we mark them. When we mark them, we catch them. No more than said that there's a fish right there, and two seconds later, bam, and got him. That wind just keeps coming up, too. Yeah. You know, we were catching them 15 feet, 17 feet earlier today. Now we're starting to get them sliding up again, nine feet, 10 feet. This wind just keeps rolling here. Should be good. Fish are getting bigger too, so. Yeah, nice. Here we go. Got him. Got him. All right. I'll slow Ooh. us down here. Turn the trolling motor off. So let the wind push us. Yeah, it feels nice. Good heavy holding down so it's great to hear i'll get the net here for you here let me turn the boat you here want me quick. to go around the other side no i'll turn the boat for you here nice walleye big one all right here we go there all right that's a high five over <laughs> there that's a great good one great yeah. fish right there the line straightened out there too look at that that is a great walleye there that's just a great fish yeah real pretty Nice. Yeah. I just love the color on these Winnie fish. They're just that beautiful green and yep. gold brown. Nice. Yeah, gorgeous. All right, we'll get that fish in the water here. Another great fish. Yeah, that was a great, beauty. Great Thanks day. so much for sharing such a fun presentation. You know, this is something that works on Winnie. It works on a lot of places, but shallow sand. You run and gun. You look for them on the electronics, and when you find them, you catch them fun way to catch a fish on a fun body of water. Yes, it is. Everything in a body of water will jump on it. and Just a great presentation, and thank you guys for 
inviting me along. Well, that's a guide's dream presentation right there, yeah. so thank you. It was yeah. a fun day. Yeah, you too. Thanks. Pleasure. We've been at the resort 12 years, so we just celebrated our, our 12th anniversary. We purchased the uh, resort in spring of uh, 2004. You know, I'd say our niche is kind of doing those little extras that make the big difference. When we get new guests in, we like to add those special touches. We just kind of like to set ourselves apart from, from all the other resorts. We offer a number of wonderful children's amenities and activities. All children under the age of 18 stay free. Pets are welcome, so we really like to not only focus on the fishing, but also the families and offer that place where everyone can enjoy um, a getaway from the, the hustle and bustle of life.